Hamza Warfa and is the highest Somali American ever appointed by the US president. Uh, before, before that, Hamza was the highest African official in the Minnesota government. He is a neighbor and a Scott County resident, resident since 2012. And please welcome to Hamza Warfa. Uh, Mohammed, uh, I was visiting town I am a resident, but also I'm visiting because I live on a plane these days, traveling back and forth between Minnesota and DC. Uh, when Mohammed invited me, I could not say no uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, for one, uh, I have been someone who has been very closely following the work of uh, Mohammed, particularly, but also as an organization, Community Resource Center. Uh, I remember uh, Dr. Ehrman uh, and I were just chatting about uh, when I was moving to Washington, D.C., uh, the Community Resource Center hosted me uh, here in uh, Scott County. Uh, and so I just want to say a few things about Mohammed, a few things about the Community Resource Center, and a few words about tonight. Uh, so uh, I value leaders who are really committed uh, to their work, but I am especially committed to supporting leaders who are values driven, who believe in integrity in their work, who take accountability seriously. I have known Mohammed for about two decades and he has consistently shown these values that we need now more than ever before. Uh, so that's one reason, main reason why I'm here. Uh, the second is uh, when I was head of workforce development for the state of Minnesota, um, it was acutely, uh, you know, awareness for everyone that our state is demographically changing fast. And in fact, within 10 years, 70% of our population growth will be coming from communities of color. So if we are transitioning our prosperity as a state, depends on how much we integrate and how much we provide opportunities for newcomers in our neighbors, in our, in our communities. Minnesota has such a rich history of welcoming newcomers, and that's why I also want to connect it to tonight, because at a time of polarization, at a time when we're seeing a lot of divides across the spectrum, uh, it's events like this, it's gatherings like this, it's dinners like this, that are gonna bring us together and create a sense of cohesion in, for our communities. Uh, and so for these reasons, I am feeling special to be here. Uh, and I just want to say really thank you to the organizers, to the Community Resource Center. I want to acknowledge the Somali National TV. Some of you heard the camera clicks. <laughs> for us, there is no event without hearing that camera clicks. Uh, so some of us actually come to events because we love Abdul Hakim and the likes of uh, <laughs> Uh, national media, you know, in our community that really do a lot of uh, important work. Uh, we, you, we all know that media is an integral part of our democracy. Uh, it's how we communicate, it's how we learn information. We know information is power. Uh, so the presence of the media uh, just really is uh, icing on the cake. Uh, so just want to say thank you again and uh, grateful that you are all here to support Community Resource Center, the amazing leaders uh, who are uh, championing and leading uh, an inclusive Minnesota, inclusive America, and a more globalized, uh, peaceful community. So thank you very much. Uh, we welcome uh, the superintendent for Shakopee Schools, uh, Dr. Mike Redman. Welcome. Uh, my wife, Carol Redman, who's an educator here in Eastern Carver County Schools, and myself, very, very honored to be here. Um, very honored to be part of, part of this group and part of our community. And uh, I've gotten to know Muhammad quite well. Uh, he uh, does an amazing job as a, one of our school board members. And during that time, I've, I've had a, uh, you know, a front row seat, as I might say, to the development of the Community Resource Center and I think it's anchored in the same things. When I talk about Shakopee Public Schools beneath my email and on my website and other places, it talks about, it just says a statement that says, every kid is my kid. 
And I think we, could, we can expand that and go, every member of our community is my brother or sister. And so we have so much in common with the Community Resource Center. Um, I have a vision for Shakopee Public Schools. I know, you know, Tim Zunker, I see him here from the Shakopee Chamber. Uh, we know the city government of Shakopee, lots of other folks. But there's a vision that Shakopee should be a leading community in terms of inclusiveness, in terms of being welcoming, and in terms of truly embracing one another and seeing diversity and difference as the asset that it is and the strength of our community. So uh, congratulations on three years, and I'm hoping for another 33 or 333. So thank you. I would like to welcome uh, my friend, um, Carrie Olmet. She's the uh, Scott County Walk for. Hi, everyone. I'm Carrie. We met. I work for Scott County as the Economic Assistance Director. I've known Abraham for uh, several years now. We um, met a while back when he was uh, starting up the organization. And it's just been, I think, a really great partnership. We chat, um, I would say, somewhat frequently, um, always wanting to make sure that the CRC is aware of the programs that we offer at Scott County. There's a lot of alignment and overlap with the work that we're doing, and just really happy to partner with Abraham and the staff, the great staff and volunteers at the CRC, and hope to continue that for a long time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm, I would like to invite my friend, that I work with her most of the time, um, FRC Family Resource Center Coordinator, Chris, welcome. Hi, everybody. I'm also very happy to be here tonight and honored to have a moment to speak. Um, I'm Crystal Boyechko, the Family Resource Center Coordinator, and um, really am proud to be joining Community Resource Center and Mohammed and Hafsa in uh, helping families connect with services and supports and by really building up those partnerships and the sense of community um, it, across Scott County, I'm working with all of our wonderful cultural navigation partners in this work. Um, I, I can't speak as eloquently as you did about uh, building just really inclusive and welcoming spaces, but um, I grew up in Scott County and I really want all families to feel that connection and sense of place as well. Oh my goodness, I didn't know I was gonna get emotional <laughs> saying that, <laughs> but truly, um, it is, it is a great honor. Yeah, thank you. So, um, the person I want to welcome, I consider my sister, because I and Mary, um, we have been working together for 15 years. Uh, we both um, working for Shakabi uh, Public Schools. Uh, we are a product of Shakabi uh, Public Schools. Um, I learn a lot. She's a leader. She's a, she works tireless. And she likes to provide equitable service everybody. And even, you know, not only Latino, she goes beyond that. And she helps everyone, you know, to have a food on the table. Um, please welcome. Mary to the podium. I'm super honored and humbled to know Abraham. Uh, he's, he's my brother. And as we are both minorities in Shakopee and we met as cultural liaisons, it was very difficult when we both joined the school district 20, what, 16 years ago? Yeah. We, had, we were hired because the numbers were there. But the services and the system wasn't designed even for us as staff to support our students. It was like it seemed like it was a check mark, right? Like boom, we got Mary, we got Lupita, we got Ibrahim, we're covering. So our positions weren't designed. It was we weren't trained or told or taught. And as we worked with our students, we started seeing the disparities and the inequities and our students falling through the through the cracks, to the cra not cracks, cracks. Sorry, <laughs> my English. I'm sorry. Through the cracks, and we we had skin in the game. We had our kids in the Shakopee Public Schools. 
We wanted them to graduate. We came from countries where educate. I come from a country where education is for the elite. Not everybody can afford a college education. High school in my in Mexico, you have to pay to go to high school. So I, um, educating both our community and our students, it was such a challenge. As of today, we continue to have some challenges with newcomers in, in our country, and we're getting new refugees from, for us, is Venezuela, Ecuador, Nicaragua, right? They're coming new, and how do we train and teach about the system of the U.S. so you can succeed? So, you know, we saw that students didn't have food. It wasn't that they were lazy, it's that they didn't have food, the parents were being deported, but fast forward 16 years later, here now we have a chamber that's offering scholarships to our students. Thank you, I, I love seeing you because it gives me hope. So thank you, Tim, for what you're doing for our community. And of course, this guy has been an amazing superintendent and supported us and supported the work that our students are doing. Like I said, I have skin in the game. My daughter received a scholarship to be a teacher of color with, through the Shakopee Public Schools. So Ashley did. Okay. And, 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 and I, I resonate with what you're saying that every kid is our kid because if they do good, we do good, right? Our community does good and we can give, we have so much as a culture to give back. We're not just here to take, sometimes people think that we're here to, to take people's jobs. We're not, we wanna create them and we want to empower them. And you know what, I never left to Mexico and I grew up being told that one day we were gonna get deported and left. And now I wish I'd get deported to Cancun someday, right? <laughs> we never left. This is our home. Shakopee is my home. So I love to see so many familiar faces. I love your heart and what you do at the Resource Center for our community. Ibrahim, you're a hero. You're a hero. So thank you. Um, I would like uh, to welcome um, the president of the Shakopee uh, Chamber of Commerce, um, Tim Zunker. I'm gonna echo the sentiment of everyone here tonight of community, community development. Um, since I became president of the Shakopee Chamber uh, 2021, we've, we've made it a mission of our organization to work with our community partners and work within the community to develop the community, give opportunity for everybody. And that's how we focus all of our efforts. And with Carrie here tonight, you know, one of our workforce initiatives, the Drive for Five program was a partnership and collaboration between the, between the county, the CDA, um, and the Southwest Intermediate School District, and our business partners to create opportunity for everyone in the community in Scott County to receive training and receive job opportunities. And we look forward to launching that program probably next month, okay. we're hoping. Uh, Dee's been a little slow with that. But you know, on top of that too, and Muhammad talked about this, is another initiative that we're working on where we can bring opportunity into Scott County. Unfortunately, we don't have a community or technical college in Scott County. Uh, knock on wood, there was some funding in the bonding bill that would help with the innovation hub. So hopefully that happens where we can bring more colleges into the community. But in the meantime, we're still working with the community colleges to bring learning and training opportunities to lift barriers where maybe there's transportation issues or something like that and bring those opportunities there. And we talked about the workforce scholarship bill. Um, that, that's a unique bill to the state of Minnesota. I'm not gonna lie, I did steal that from South Dakota, um, <laughs> but to bring it into Scott County and it did pass out of the conference committee yesterday evening uh, in the jobs omnibus bill. So uh, Mary, Muhammad, thank you so much for your support of that uh, with your letters to the legislators. Um, and that's just wonderful to show. And when we did have that public private partnership talking about that, when we went into conf when we went into committee to testify, we had 14 letters, 15 letters. It didn't matter in those committees, so it showed that community support that we have to build that. But with that program, with the public-private partnership that we'll bring with that program, hopefully we can get some of the most of that training into Scott County, give those opportunities to everybody in the community to grow, thrive, and succeed, and just make our amazing community even better. So thank you. Uh, the person I'm, I'm calling is uh, Dr. Albert. Uh, please join me to welcome. Good evening, it's an honor to be here as, as others have said. Um, I have um, felt myself to be a cheerleader 
and uh, I'm here with a lot of other cheerleaders. It's a pleasure to meet all of you because um, I, think, uh, I think the theme that I've heard is um, uh, we all know Muhammad in one form or another over or some of you for many, many years, me uh, much less, but I, am, um, I, I have the same sense uh, as to who he is as you described, perfectly uh, described who my sense of Muhammad is. And so um, I'm thrilled that we get a chance to work together and, and I'm hopeful for uh, the grants that we're working on that we'll, uh, we'll see some success with it. But um, I, I've, uh, I've overseen big projects in two different states and two very, very significant counties. And um, I love the, this, here's a county that's coming together uh, that cares and, and look, um, so yes, human services, but then we, we've got um, the um, chamber here, I, you know, and, and, and the school district, and wow, this is how you build community. So I'm thrilled. Um, I'm calling Abdi. Abdullah is a, um, he's a education leader, is a principal. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Mohammed. Uh, my name is Abdi. I am uh, executive director and the principal of small charter school in Richville. And I've seen, I heard the short time that I was here, a few things about echoes, about community, community development, supporting the students. And it is a passion. If you don't have a passion about helping or becoming a helper for others, you won't be able to help anybody. So kudos to you, congratulations. You have that passion in your heart that helping others. So. If you don't have that, you won't be able. You're gonna be executive sitting in the top of, you know, 12 to 15th floor. So it is a lot to do that. But due to the COVID, we all learned a lot of different things. So I was an intern at that time uh, to get hours on a superintendent. It's the time that I ever questioned myself like, Shall I continue this path of helping and being with the students and you know, supporting families and all that, or should I just walk away and just do something else in my life? And a lot of people had that, I'm not alone, a lot of people had that question. I heard like in education, but you can correct me, about 10% left the field. It's a lot of, statistically, I don't have the numbers right now. But when things is going well for you, it is easy to be a leader and run things. Those are the times that I have been witness Muhammad stepped it in and provide a guidance and support and being there in the community. So congratulations, Muhammad. Thanks for your support. Thanks for doing a lot of work.